There's nothing like the forgiveness of God. Amen. And it came at such a high price. Let us never forget. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. What my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart be?
sometimes we get to worship in him and you just forget what you're doing yeah. <laughs> that's just the way it is sometimes
Thank you. Yes, Jesus. Oh, there's no one like our God. Amen. Amen. promise that where two or three are gathered in his name, he yes. is present. Yes. He is here yes. among yes. us. Do you believe yes. that? Yes. Church? Yes. yes. 
Welcome, Lord. Welcome, yes. Lord. Be yes. here among us. We thank you for your promise that you inhabit the praises of your people. Yes. We you. praise you, God. We thank you for every good thing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Who's doing announcements today? George! Good morning. How you doing today? Uh, Pastor Ken, you know, and Ms. Dorothy, they in Nashville, so we're going to pray for them, have a safe travel return, and uh, we, we live with purpose, we love with passion, and we lift up all the people. So you're welcome, you're welcome, and you're welcome. <laughs> we have some announcements today. Uh, we have the YouTube channel, Grace Community Church. You can subscribe, hit the like, and you can watch the, the service. You can watch the worship team. And uh, what else we got? Uh, candy Palooza. October 20, 31st, uh, start bringing the candy. We need a lot of candy. Uh, we have a lot of kids coming this year, and uh, we need more and more candy. Uh, we also have uh, Benito. He's teaching the, the prophecy on the third Sunday of each month uh, here at church from, uh, from five to six. It's just one hour. It may go over an hour, but that's, that's okay. It's, I, I like learning from, from Benito. Uh, what else we got? The OAGW support. We, we started in September the 7th. Uh, Barlet, Memphis area. So for your privacy, contact us. So overcoming the, the God of views ways is, uh, was it here at church? Yeah. Or it was here, yeah. So it's here. Uh, what else we got? The man's breakfast. Uh, October the 6th from 8, 8.30 a.m., about an hour. Uh, we don't know who's cooking. Anybody want to volunteer to cook? Nobody? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, what else we got? The ladies' Bible study is uh, first Saturday of every month at 11. This, this October is going to be the 6th. Uh, what else we got? Wednesday. So Wednesday gathering is from 6 to 7. Uh, fees for, for $5, not to, to exceed $20. For family, from 7 to 8, uh, we have Bible study. Uh, Nursery will be provided. So if you got kids, you can come and leave them in the nursery. Uh, what else we got? That's it. So we got Pastor Ben coming up here and say some words. Good morning. Thank you, George. Hey, um, yesterday we had our training for uh, sharing the gospel with people. And, you know, and I can't overstate what. It will do for your life when you begin to get focused. Really what you're doing is joining Jesus in his mission to reach the world. And when you kind of take that upon yourself and you join with him in that, it will kick your spiritual life into a new level. And so uh, we're going to be doing more and more of that training and thank you for the ones who were there. Thank you for the ones who have participated in it. And, and we're, we, are, we are about, you know, lifting up people and reaching people. You know, so uh, please be praying about that and thinking about what would God have me to do? You know, what, what, what's my responsibility to my, to, you know, he said, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, how can we, we got to love our neighbors. Well, we certainly want them to know about the gospel. So Anyway, and, and along those lines, it's our joy and privilege to have Bill and Lisa Walker here with us. Now, they have given their lives to spreading the gospel throughout the whole world. And they are really, uh, just, I get, get a newsletter from them, like, and they're in, uh, within the last month or so, they've been in uh, Mexico, been in South Africa, been in Montreal, uh, where else y'all been? Just all over. All over just, they, they don't even know where they've been all the time. They, they, are, they are about the business of sharing the gospel to the whole world. And, and they got a lot to share with us today. So 
I want to welcome Bill and Lisa to come and share with us. Thank you for coming. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to grab this mic over here. Can we just grab this mic? Oh, okay. You got one there. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I want to share with you um, some verses from Scripture. Psalms 57, <clears throat> verses 9, and I'll read through verse 11 to the end of the chapter. It says, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations for your steadfast love is great to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above all the heavens. Let your glory be all over the earth. And then Psalms 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, Give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. And to him who alone does great wonders, his steadfast love endures forever. And this morning, we are um, excited to share about God's steadfast love, not only in our lives as missionaries, but in all the different areas that we are able to visit and to minister and to work alongside with, God is steadfast in all things. And, you know, this, this, this past couple days with the hurricane and everything, I am still seeing even here, God's hand, he's steadfast. His love is steadfast. He is faithful and he is just. And I just give him all the glory and praise. I love the worship this morning. Thank you for that. Um, we are Bill and Lisa Walker, as you said, and we are the EMC missionaries to the event to the EMC, okay? We minister with all of our global conferences throughout the world. Um, can I ask somebody to help me out here and pass these out for me, please? We want to make sure you have each have one of those. Are you one? Am I on? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm caught. So we are, so the Evangelical Methodist Church International is comprised of six global conferences, one of which is us here in the U.S., all of our churches here in the States, and we also have five global conferences around the world, which we'll want to share with you a little bit <clears throat> about each of these. And uh, we want to call, talk to you a little bit about ourselves, um, you know, our, how God called us. We want to, just very briefly, I was called to be a missionary when I was living in Bolivia, South America, my parents were missionaries, and the Lord called me when I was 17. I had dreams of being an Air Force pilot, but the Lord says, I want you to be a missionary, and I said, okay, I will do it. And then God called Lisa much later, uh, after we had, had met and were in college together, the Lord called her to be a missionary. So we are both called to missions, and that call... When the Lord puts a call in your life, he doesn't take it off. Mm -hmm. he, he, keeps, he keeps on you. He keeps wanting you to be involved in his work. It looks different sometimes. Yes. Uh, for a lot of missionaries, they, they know exactly where they are going, <clears throat> the country they're going to be in, and they are there for the rest of their lives. We thought that. Well, yeah. <laughs> we thought that we would be in Mexico where we served for six <clears throat> years, um, and we were going to spend the rest of our lives there. That was the plan um, for us, our plan. But God is faithful. He is steadfast. Yeah. He has other plans, and we have to listen. And so our call, we, we were missionaries in Mexico for six years, and then we came back in 2008, and the Lord put us into multi-ethnic ministry, and now he's led us into a ministry that we never dreamed that we would be involved with, and that is ministering to all of our global conferences. And um, there, there it is. Did I skip a slide? 
No. I knew you said it, it lags just a bit, so I want to make sure that. I may have to have you advance them for me because it just, it, yeah, we'll just, we'll just do it there. I'll advance it if I can, and I'll let you know if it doesn't. So Lisa and I live where that star is at, in Athens, Georgia. Um, you know, if you're Bulldogs fans or heartbroken today, you know, and, you know, it was, it, we knew it was going to be a rough game, but you know, anyway, anyway. So moving on to better, better topics, uh, but we live, we live at ground zero uh, for the Georgia Bulldogs. We live in Athens, just outside of Athens, Georgia. And from there, we serve our global conferences uh, around the world. And yeah, you're going to have to do it. Um, so we have the global conference. We have five global conferences in the EMC around the world. The first one is Mexico. It was the oldest and longest member of the Evangelical Methodist Church. Uh, actually, the conference in Mexico is actually older than the United States, the EMC in the U.S. We were formed in 1946. They were founded in 1926. So they are not our daughter. They are our older sister, <laughs> if you want to look at it that way. Uh, let's go ahead to the next one. I think we've got some photos uh, so these are some pictures of a re very recent Mexico uh, missions trip that we took to Mexico, Mission Exposure. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, we took a team of eight this summer and had some great ministry, some sports ministry, some construction ministry, um, ministry with a nursing home. We did a, um, a uh, marriage seminar, and we were just really glad to take a, a small group to Mexico over this past summer. Mm -hmm. You want to share anything about that? We'll just keep on going. All right, we'll talk more about that in mission exposure. The next conference is Myanmar. Myanmar it was was affiliated, I don't know, 2006, and so it's it's been with this country has been with us for a little while. You may know Myanmar by a different name, Burma. You may recognize that name more readily. Uh, the correct name is the Union of the Republic of Myanmar, or Republic of the Union of Myanmar, but we'll just call it Myanmar for short. And Myanmar has uh, been just a, a phenomenal uh, ministry. They are very, uh, very um, aggressive, or it's not aggressive, is not a, kind of a bad word, but very intentional in, in their ministry. Myanmar is predominantly Buddhist, uh, probably 90% or better, 98% Buddhist. And the, but the church continues to grow. The church grows. The church, they have several mission fields, and they are... Very, really moving forward in the gospel, and we're glad to be able to support them in many ways. They have their own missionaries that they plant. They have mission fields within their own country, and they support their own missionaries. And so we're very glad for them to do that. They are also a war-torn country right now. You may have heard them in the news at different times. Uh, there is a civil war going on. It has been going on since February 2021, and they are in really bad situation um, COVID and the war was going on. Of course, COVID has dissipated mostly now, but the war continues. You can see the, the picture of the flames of the buildings in the back. Um, the pictures of, that has Lisa in it was photos that we took when we were there in 2020, just as, the, as COVID was making its debut. Literally. <laughs> Literally, they were starting to take temperatures when you get on the planes and you're going into restaurants. Um, so we got back just in the nick of time to the States. But um, in spite of all the hardships, Myanmar, the churches in Myanmar are doing really well. Uh, they're not doing well financially. They're doing well in the sense that they're faithful to the call. Amen. And the Lord blesses them. God's steadfast love. Um, that's that, yes, that's that steadfast love. They're doing horribly in terms of finance, in terms of logistics, in terms of being able to operate and to function. Uh, like we think of a church, Sunday, Sunday services, being able to do that, several of our churches have had to suspend operations, have to suspend their meetings because of, of the war going on around them. Many people are internally displaced. Well, and not even just suspend, it's, they don't have a building. Sometimes they don't, they have don't have even have buildings anymore. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, you do pray for Myanmar. Yeah, they are they're in a really bad situation, but they're faithful in that. And so they have a lesson for us. Whatever happens, don't give up. Know that God is with us and just keep pushing forward and keep believing in him. Um, our next conference is um, CFAN, Christ for All 
nations. Christ for all nations. We call it CFAN. You now you know why we call it CFAN, right? Uh, we say that 10 times real fast. It, get, it gets to be a mouthful. They are in Democratic Republic of Congo. Which is it, where the star is. That's the star. It's in, it's in the Democratic Republic of Congo. But, However, uh, CFAN for all nations because uh, a lot of the uh, people from the Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, have gone to different countries. And so there are mm -hmm. churches um, that are in other countries that are Congolese congregations. Mm -hmm. um, and that includes Montreal and Toronto. Uh, yes, so that's why Christ for All Nations. Yep. Yeah. And so they, in, because they are in different nations, they, did not they didn't want the name of their conference to be the name of their country because they wanted it to reflect the vision that they have. And so we're very glad for that. And so here's some pictures of some baptisms of some folks in front of a church. The youth group was fairly, I think the picture itself is old. They just had another youth camp um, in, at the end of August. And so we were able to go there and visit with um, back Last a year ago. I'm cutting, I'm hitting October. this button. Back um, in October, yeah. we went up. We, Lisa a year and I, ago, we were. This past um, yes, August, yes. Max and Judy were there. So if you saw pictures on the EMC page, Max yes. um, and Judy Edwards were there. Yeah. We were, were not a little there. bit part of the camp. Yep, you were not. But we were there in October 2023. Mm -hmm. All right, and then 23. Uh, 23, yes. And then here we have Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific is basically the area surrounding Manila, then the Philippines. And we were there in December. We went there for a leadership camp. Uh, the, by the way, I'll say the name, they call themselves not just the Philippine Conference. They have a bigger vision than that. They want to be Asia Pacific. They want to eventually have church, plant churches in different countries. They, their way of church planting or of taking the gospel is more like the New Testament method rather than the way that we typically think of church planting today. If you remember when the great persecution broke out after the martyrdom of Stephen, it says the people basically scattered because of the persecution. And everywhere they went, they shared the gospel. And that is how the gospel got to Crete. That's how the gospel got to Antioch, where Paul eventually ended up being called from. Not because someone said, said we need to plant a church in this city. They just they fled there, and they went because of their work. They could find refuge and work. And when, when they were there, they had the gospel with them, and they shared the gospel, and the churches began to, to sprout and to grow. And that's, that's kind of their thinking of church planting. They go to other countries for work. They go to other places, and whether for whatever reason it is, and they take the gospel with them. They don't necessarily go as officially as saying, we are here to plant a church. They say, we're here to live, and we bring Jesus with us. And so we were there in, uh, in the Philippines, and they do, they do intentionally plant churches within the Philippines. But their expansion is, more, is done a little bit different. Um, and we were there in the Philippines uh, last December, and we're able to participate again with Max and Judy Edwards, our general superintendent and his wife, in a leadership <laughs> camp, as they called it. And if you could take a leadership training seminar and a youth camp and slam them together, <laughs> that's what we had. Almost everyone there was under 30. Yeah. There it wasn't what we expected, though. We, we expected church leaders. Yes, I expected a bunch of pastors to be together, and we were going to sit around and talk about leadership. It was not that, it was not that stodgy. <laughs> it was not that stoic. It there was, was all, a lot of youth that are feeling called to be a yes. part of the leadership in their churches, and so mm -hmm. that was a huge blessing for me to see young people, young adults, that were um, there to learn how to be good leaders in their churches. Yeah, and not necessarily pastors. So, right. There were some of those. But um, not, not necessarily to become pastors. Mm -hmm. There were some of those, but they were there to just learn how to be a leader. And it, was, it went from theoretical and theological to very pragmatic and practical, all the way down how, how to organize an event. From lofty discussions of leadership and biblical examples down to how do you organize an event. And it was, it was really a good time. A lot of worship. And so we were very glad to be able to do that to help them uh, to join with them. We didn't, I mean, we were speakers, but honestly, um, they probably could have done it without us. Um, the Border World Missions did uh, heavily fund that camp to make, to, we did the heavy lifting on the financial side to make it possible, and we're very glad 
to, be, to have been able to do that. We are hoping to have another trip um, next, not this December, but next December, but we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to talk about mission exposure. So we'll go ahead and keep moving through the slides. Our most recent is South Africa, very recently affiliated, <clears throat> and we just came back from South Africa. We went there with the stated purpose of helping them start a pastor's school. Of course, there was more than that, and honestly, by the time, we, we thought we were going to be doing several days of teaching, but by the time, the time kept getting whittled down, and we were like, you know, we were not really sure... <laughs> What we were, how we were going to do this. The Lord knew what he was doing. Yes, he did. They, have, they already had a, a structure in mind. They had a lot of more preparations already done than we thought. We were there, in a sense, to bless, to encourage, to be able to see what they have got up and almost up and running, and to, and to pray with them, and get really just to bless what, they have, what they've got going. And the, the, you, you go ahead and tell about the welcome. And I I, never first of all, um, you know, Bill mentioned at the beginning I had a call to missions and stuff. I have to, t to, be, to be very honest with you, missions was the farthest thing from my mind when mm -hmm. I was in high school. Um, my parents were Salvation Army officers. My grandparents were Salvation Army officers. My great-grandparents were Salvation Army officers. You kind of get the... Yeah, okay. Um, ministry was not it. I wanted to be a, a flight attendant or a music teacher, and I kind of was heading in those directions. Um, <clears throat> and when, you know, if, if the Lord said, okay, I, you know, I'll go to ministry if you really want me to, you know, but I, I said, please don't ever send me to Africa. Actually, back in the 80s, there was a song, God, please don't send me to Africa. I mean, there's an actual song, and it was my song, my theme, you know, type of thing. Um, but you know, when you say, God, my life is yours, I will do whatever you want me to do, and you let him take control, things change. And I was so excited, <laughs> so excited to be able to go to Africa. It was a huge blessing. Um, it was very humbling for me, honestly. I, I, yeah. I'm very unworthy, let me tell you. Uh, we were met... Um, at the first church we were going to by a, literally a parade that brought us into the church. Uh, and they were singing and worshiping and waving to us. And um, we don't have those pictures up there, but we can show them something. Um, we can show you after church. Like, we oh, have hi. You know, and it was just, they were so welcoming, so loving, so giving, so caring. I was just going to say, share the bottom picture over here. Kind of, There's a lot happening in there. You can see people aren't really looking. Brother Max is looking down. Well, Brother Max is looking down at our, um, our welcome gift, I guess you could say. Uh, we were called out of the building after we had a meeting and said, um, you know, we could just say you're welcome to the village, but that's not how we do things. When we welcome somebody to a village, we welcome them with um, a, gift. A, a gift, and this gift was a lamb. And... Um, that lamb was a very special gift because it was our dinner. <laughs> so it was a live lamb when it was presented to us. Um, and then we had it. I think it was the next day. day. Um, but it was interesting. Yeah. It was wonderful. Just They were so giving, so caring, yes. so loving. We met the um, lamb in the last 15 minutes of yes, his life. Yes, of his life, yeah. Um, but I'll say also worship. I mean, y'all's worship was great this morning. I praise the Lord for it. Um, but if you like to dance and just, and, 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 uh, wow. This is awesome. So we're going to be talking again a little bit about mission and exposure. We keep saying that. I hope you're getting excited about mission exposure because we keep mentioning it a little bit later about going to South Africa. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next one. So what is it that, so that's, that's where, that's, these are the conferences that we are involved with, we minister to, but what is it that we do? First of all, we do communication. Um, we keep the communication lines open. We do things, um, various forms of communication in order so that in the U.S. we know what's happening in the conferences and we want the conferences to know what's happening here as well. So it's two-way. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. There, there are brothers and sisters. They're, you know, they're not just, oh, it's a mission field that we support. 
Um, and, and a lot of people say, okay, well, why are you guys raising your funds? So this is why he, Bill said this is what we do, part of this. Um, but because they're our brothers and sisters, don't you want to keep up with your family, right? You want to know what's going on in the world with your brothers and sisters. You want to know, are they okay? How are they doing? What's happening in their lives? How can we help? All those different things. And they want to know the same about us. They want to know what we're doing. Um, Facebook is great. A lot of our, our um, places have Facebook and Internet, and you'll find they will, we're mm -hmm. friends with a lot of people on Facebook, and they see... <clears throat> A lot of our churches, they start, you may find somebody from South Africa one day try to, to befriend the you know, Grace Communion. You're like, oh, is this somebody we know or not? No, you know, you have to always watch. I get it. Um, so that is one thing is we use Facebook um, to communicate with you all and them. We have the Caruso, which comes up out from the denomination uh, monthly, and we have an article in that. And from that article, we also send out a um, newsletter, you might say, okay? And then we have our YouTube channel um, as The Thread, and it's at The Thread, uh, EMC, correct? Did I say that correctly? At The Thread, EMC. So it's youtube.com slash at The Thread, EMC. So if you have a YouTube channel, you understand, you understand how that formatting yeah. works. And um, on that <clears throat> channel, you will find interviews. I mean, it's, it's a example there. But there's interviews with different people from different countries, including the United States. And um, you may find that we may f ask one or two of you today, even, <laughs> to take a moment <laughs> and interview you all. Because our brothers and sisters really want to get to know us. And so we, we are really into trying to boost the communication within the Evangelical Methodist Church. Not going, there we go. Uh, of course, we visit. We visit our global conferences. You've seen some of those, just a few of the pictures from our conference there. Um, but <clears throat> communication is by its alone, emails and social media and videos, those are not enough face to face. You know how we came when we, during COVID, we couldn't communicate, we couldn't go do anything. And so, and how much we longed to have that. Or if you've ever done a Zoom meeting versus meeting with people in person, you know it's so much better in person. Well, we Westerners do very well with online communication. But if we crave in person, uh, our, our brothers and sisters in other countries need it even more. They are much more relational than we as Americans are. And so... The, the in-person visits are essential. Uh, Lisa, will, again, will share you more about that when we get to mission exposure because this was just um, resaltado, <laughs> resaltado, um, highlighted to us when we were in Mexico about how important that is. Okay, let's go to the next. And prayer requests. This is something that we send out. Um, now, on the prayer card that you have... <clears throat> It's time to take it yeah, out. Time to pull those out, and it. those that were passed out. If you hold it up, you look on the, you see our picture all the way to the bottom of that sheet. You will find uh, here, Pastor Ben. I think, or, oh, there he, you've got one. Um, all the way to the bottom, you will find uh, various information where we're asking for information from you. One of those things is an email address. <clears throat> if you supply us with an email address, we will add you to a list that gets sent out every Monday. So there'll be one tomorrow, and that has prayer requests from all over the world, from all of our global conferences. Um, they stay on there until the prayer request is answered or it's, it's resolved, um, but we add things. Anything that is new, we, we highlight it as being new. Um, and those, those are all from all, all of these conferences that we've just shared with you, we get prayer requests from them. Sometimes they're very specific, sometimes they're general. Um, and you can use that list. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I keep clearing it's my throat. I don't need a drink. Right? It's just <clears throat> I hate to clear my throat with a microphone on my face. But <laughs> the, you can use those prayer, this prayer li list <clears throat> at any time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, Ben does it all the time. Oh, okay. Well, <clears throat> well I'm, I'm in good company then. Maybe I will too. Uh, I always struggle with these anyway. There we go. 
So you can use that prayer request anytime, that list anytime. You can use it in your own personal prayer time, family time, church prayer time. Um, we ask that you not share it outside the church family. <clears throat> Sometimes there is sensitive information in there that we would, be want, we would not want to just be broadcast out on the internet. Um, so don't, don't take it and post it. Don't share it to social media. You can, you, know, you can just use it here within your church family. It's fine. Um, Wednesday night, now in, in that email, same email, there comes, there's a Zoom link. So if you would like to join us on Zoom Wednesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, you're welcome to do that. We'd be glad to have you get online and, and pray with us. We do that every Wednesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central. <clears throat> we have usually have our general superintendent from Myanmar. He's very faithful and join us. Every now and then, the general superintendent from Asia Pacific will join us as well. Um, and so we have a good time, a brief time, about 30 minutes of prayer time together, praying for our, our fellow global conferences around the world. All right, so um, prayer requests, that's one thing that we do, and we share. They want to know what our prayer requests are. They want to know how they can pray for us as well. Yes, sir. Uh, I, get, I get full healing. Like, <clears throat> and physically, I get fully set free from the enemy. Like, like, I get, like I'm 25, but I get bone and joint stiffness, mm -hmm. and my memory's mm -hmm. getting bad. And, mm -hmm. and like, I would like healing to where where this is no longer prescribed medicine because, like, the medicine I'm on, like, right. I, I, don't, I don't like it at all. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, it just feels like, like, once I act it up, it just feels like they want me on medicine no matter what it does to me. Mm. Well, and again, that's where praying for things like that. We'll be glad to, you know, and I guess share that. Share that. Fully set free from the enemy. Mm -hmm. like, Amen. That's good. Amen. Very good. So that, that's, those are, like, some prayer requests. And Absolutely. And atmosphere in my house. Mm -hmm. parents and, and like I do not know if my family is saved because like because like most of my family is Catholic. Mm. Okay. So we definitely have well, them. you can give you can put your email on there, and uh, you have our email on there. You're welcome to share those with us, and we'll be glad to we'll be glad to put that on the list. Absolutely. All right. Um, we couldn't go to the next one. So one of the things we do is promote global projects as well. So we don't we don't fund the budgets or the salaries of conferences or their officers or their general superintendents or anything like that but they have some things that they have need of from time to time that are beyond that what their budget would help would cover and we are glad you know God has placed a lot of financial resources here in the U.S. Uh, many of us we, we you know we just go through the daily grind we struggle to pay our bills and such but compared to folks in other countries we still have it pretty good and so the Lord has blessed us and we can give to various things. We just sent money over to buy, uh, I believe it was 110 Bibles for brand new converts in Myanmar who have been saved from Buddhism and had been baptized. And they needed a Bible. And so there's a fund already set up. People give to it. You can give to it. And there are other things as well. Um, sometimes there's relief. We've sent, in the last few years, we've sent several thousand dollars over to Myanmar because of, because of situations that have come up. So we're glad to help with these. Um, there's a, we have a list on our website, emchurch.org. Let me just go ahead and briefly just and, say yes. really briefly some, just a few of the projects. Um, okay. There's in South Africa, they are <clears throat> planting, um, planting, sorry, wrong word. Uh, we Building. dedicated <laughs> land and started groundbreaking for a preschool. So that's going to be a project. Also land, um, they're going to be building for a pastor's school, like a dormitory. Um, that's South Africa. That will be a project you'll see but coming up. Um, DRC is going to, is a, a working on buses. The, the thought is to, for them to buy buses. Yep. Uh, the buses they will use to, as business, this business as mission, they will use them as business during the week. And they will use them as ministry on the weekend. And so the, the business that they operate the buses commercially during the week, they will, through that funding, funding, they will maintain the buses, replace the buses in due time, create revenue for the ministry, mm -hmm. and also use the buses in ministry to pick up people to carry them to church or take kids to youth camp, things like that. So that is, an, that is also a possibility. Just, there's just some of those. Mexico has different projects for different yeah. camps and things. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of possibilities for you to say, okay, how can I help? in the world. And so be watching for those. Absolutely. And again, you can find on our website, emchurch.org. 
you can find those, uh, the, a list of those. And if you need help finding it, you can just contact us. We'll be glad to help. Uh, all right, uh, next, please. The School of Ministry is something that we've been working on developing for several years now. The Global School of Ministry is, I envision that it might be a centralized uh, actual institution, but it's proven to be <clears throat> a decentralized, and it's a networking of schools of ministry in each of the global conferences. And my role in this is, my vision is to help these conferences bring their educational standards up to a, minim, a certain minimum for pastoral training. And this, this just equips our pastors and helps them uh, do a better job with, with their, their ministry, mm -hmm. uh, basic theological and biblical education. And so, so this is something, this is one of the things that, that we do as well. All right, uh, next please. It's here, y'all ready? <laughs> okay, mission exposure. Basically, in a nutshell, is mission trips. Uh, we have started uh, getting mission trips going again amongst the EMC. Now, you may say, oh, no, we've been doing it for a while. I've seen this church over here doing it. And, yes, a lot of churches do take mission trips, and they go on mission trips. But they, unfortunately, not always go to EMC, our global conferences. And so we really wanted to start presenting mission trips and having mission trips to our global conferences specifically EMC churches. We went to Mexico, and that was our first one. We had hoped to be going to the Philippines, and that didn't come, go through, but we will be doing that in 2026. It's five. 2025. 25, December sorry. 2025, yes. so next December. Right. Our trip to South Africa was just the four of us, um, but coming in 2026, mm -hmm. we have a conference that they want us to come down for uh, youth and children so if you were interested in going to South Africa that will be in 2026 and then Mexico again will be next year we will do at least one in Mexico um, and you're like well why is it so important why is it important that we just go to these places that we already have you know our churches are at while we were in Mexico, uh, we had an opportunity to sit down and talk with a lot of the pastors and interview pastors just for the, the thread and such. Um, but I had several pastors talk to me and just thanking us for bringing a group down. We were a small group. I don't feel like in our thinking we may not have done a lot. But to them, just being there was huge. And tears they thanked us for remembering them, for not forgetting about them. Remember I talked about how on, there are a lot of people on Facebook throughout the world, and they see a lot of our churches doing all these things, mm -hmm. and they're like, uh, I'm, I'm not your little you know, brother, or I'm not your sister, or what about us? And we've heard that, and um, they're hurt. you know. They, the, and so just being able to go to our brothers and sisters and our, fam our church family is a huge blessing to them. Honestly, it's to me. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. But to aside be able to from encourage. being for us or anybody who goes, it's Yes, for them. it is. They, and they are right. craving, um, they want that desperately. We heard it in Africa. Bring people, bring a group. We want you to bring people. So we are excited to have our mission exposure where we can take people to any of our um, global conferences. So be watching all of our newsletters and the Caruso and the Thread, all these different <clears throat> things, so that when a trip is coming up, you can say, Lord, is this a trip you want me to go on? And pray about it and let him guide you and direct you and start fundraising and all that fun stuff. So. All right. Go to the next one. So... Um, Lisa and I, you know, we're, like I said, we're called by God. We absolutely love what we do. We, it isn't about us being fulfilled. It's about fulfilling God's desire and design for our lives. But when you do that, you love it. Mm -hmm. But we cannot, uh, we cannot do this alone. We have to have with us uh, a team. And just kind of advance, I think there's maybe two or three. We have to have uh, a team of partners to do it with us. Um, we need to have uh, partners for um, prayer, 
We need to have people who will pray with us regularly, uh, pray for us. Uh, we need to have partners who will give financially to support us full time in the work that we're doing. That's how we are. That's how we are funded. Uh, we are not funded through the general conference budget of the Evangelical Methodist Church. Uh, w wish we were. Maybe someday that'll happen. But right now we are dependent upon people who give on a regular basis to um, to our our ministry. And then of course we need partners to who will help us do the work. We want people to go with us. And uh, not, not that, you know, we don't just need traveling buddies, but we want people to come and experience. Uh, we want you to be able to be there personally and to see the work that is going on and to meet these people that we're telling you about. Um, they, are, they are very real, and they would be very glad to receive you in their country. And so we pray, you know, this partnership um, with the, the church that we have, we want to grow, the, grow this global partnership and strengthen our global family of the EMC. And so we're very thankful. We thank you for the partnership that you have with us uh, in prayer. Uh, as, you, as you're able to give financially for our ministry, we definitely depend on that, and we, we do very much need it. We will not be able to do what we, what we are doing without the help of all of the Evangelical Methodist congregations in the United States. And so we encourage you to participate in that. On the prayer card, um, you, again, you will see uh, a way in which you can contribute to the work of EMC missions. You can give monthly. You can give um, on, a, on, a other, on some other basis, a one-time, whatever you want to do. So if you will fill that bottom part out, however much, whatever you want to, however you want to fill that bottom section out, mm -hmm. uh, definitely give us your email address so we can send you the prayer list. But you can fill out uh, your contact information, how you, how you would like to support us. Uh, just detach that and give that back to us, and then keep that top part that has our picture. And if you flip around on the back side of that, you will see that it has uh, some links and information about uh, how to communicate with us, as well as our YouTube channel. We would love to take some time and talk with you. Um, after service, we will be out in the yep. entryway out there. And we have a little display table with different things from different places. Um, we have some, many, <laughs> from different, different countries. countries. If you want to look at that, it's, uh, for me, it's kind like of to, exciting. If you'd like to um, see what the currency looks like. Or, yeah, the currency is like that. But and if you have any <coughs> questions um, about any of the countries that we've talked about and what, what actually is going on, about churches yep. there, people there, we would love to be able to chat with you and talk to you. Well, thank you very much for your attention this morning. Thank you, Pastor Ben, for... Uh, welcoming us and giving us the opportunity to share about EMC missions today. God bless you all. Thank you. Hey, thank you for coming. Hey, thank, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Y'all, I can, I can just say from personal experience that if you ever go on a mission trip, I mean, go into one of these countries, and I'm, I'm not talking like one of these vacation places, you know, like Cancun or something. And those are, those are great places, you know, I'm not knocking that. I'm talking about going into <clears throat> where they live on, on a fraction of what we live on, you know, all over the world. You know, it's been blessed to go to a few places around uh, the world. And, you know, the poverty, you just can't, can't believe it. The, what, what people live in every day, it will change your world. It will change your idea of what you know, first of all, how good we've got it here. And our poor people here have it better than most of the world. You know, our, our people in what we call poverty level here is, is rich compared to about 80 or more percent of the world. I think it's higher than that. But <clears throat> anyway, and to be able to go and share the gospel with people and, and to see the joy in their lives and the thanksgiving, thanking you for being there. So anyway, uh, you don't need to hear from me. They did a great job telling. I just wanted to share that with you. But uh, I really encourage you to do something with those cards and support them. And we, uh, Ann and I, support a small gift every month. We don't give much. But all of us together, you know, giving... Uh, can really do a lot to help their ministry. And, and then and be thinking about and praying about 
if you could go to one of these countries and go on one of the trips with them. So, and then the, the, the next thing is, is God calling you? You know, to, is, is God calling us, one of us, you know, the, to go to a place like that and live like that, live as a missionary? And, you know, you know he's, he's, he's always sending people out. So that's how that's how people got called. People that you heard Lisa never intended to. Didn't have a clue that God was going to do that. And he does that. And people find out that they, they discover the joy and happiness of it. So anyway, so please take those and pray about them. Right now we're going to receive our offering. And it's Tyrone back there somewhere. With you. He didn't show up today. Okay. All right. Well, George, would you come and ask the Lord to bless the offering? <clears throat> we got a lot of people out today. <laughs> uh, here we go. Dear Lord, bless us this evening. Thank you for what you have done for us. Thank you for everything you have done for us, what you have given us. We just want to give back to you in, in, in being thankful for what you, what you have done. Uh, open, open people's mind and, and let them give you what is yours, Lord, in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, George. I, I, like, I like your words. They give, let them give, give you what's yours. <laughs> that's, that's a great way of putting it, a great way of thinking about it. Uh, our guys that usually have the, man, this is, uh, hey, Vince, would, would you grab a offering plate over here, please? So uh, if you would, drop it in the, in the offering. Anyway, we are, we are very shorthanded today. <laughs> George got one, but we usually got another one over here. I don't know what happened to it. The people disappeared, but not the money, <laughs> just just people <laughs> that are normally here. Anyway, so uh, how are y'all going to close us out today? We just want to say, uh, if you if you're watching online right now, or if you're here among us this morning and and you're thinking about all this is going on. It's all because of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's all because of what he did for us. That's why we worship him. And if you'd like to know more about that or talk to somebody about, you know, about salvation, about eternal life, about heaven, uh, Pastor Ben is here and if you're watching online, you go, go to our website. There's a link you can click, to click, and we will call you back today. That's right. Um, we just want to take a moment, and Whitney's going to play, and we'll sing a little bit of the chorus and, and just uh, reflect on how good he is and what he's done for us.
we count people because people count. Thank you for being here. Remember, y'all, if you can't go to a foreign country, so you can help them go. So that's, that's your way of being involved in that. So please pray about that and think about that as we leave today. And remember this one thing. God is love and love, love never, never fails. fails. Right. Y'all have a, great, have a great day. Stop on the way out and, and look at their display table.